Hi, in this video I'm going to review this uh, product I bought called a Mushi Meter. Um, let's just take it out of the case. It came in this nice case. So what we've got in here is the meter itself. Got three uh, alligator clip things for test leads and three test leads. Let's zoom in on the meter. Okay, so what this is, is this is a remote uh, multimeter. It works via an app on your Android or iPhone phone or your iPad tablet or, you know, whatever device you might have um, that you typically run apps on. And it's wireless, so it's got batteries, it's got a Bluetooth uh, transmitter in it, and it'll send over Bluetooth to your, your Android or Apple device, and it'll turn your device into a multimeter. And there's a couple cool things about this. You know, one is it does uh, simultaneous volt and amp measurement. Uh, the other thing is that it is a remote device. So I've tested this and I've been able to put it up to about 45 feet away from my tablet and uh, still read from it. I don't know if that range is typical or if my environment here is better or worse than average. But you know, this would allow you to put the multimeter, you know, you could put it under the hood of your car and measure something. You could put it, you know, inside of uh, your computer and measure something, you know, anything where you might, you might not be able to run the wires all the way to your uh, your traditional multimeter you know maybe you you've got to put this in a location that's you know 10 feet away from your workbench and you don't want to have to string a wire all that way so this this is great for doing that um, so it has three or it has four uh, banana jack things on the front there's a common uh, volts and amps um, as I said before the uh, volts and amps it can read from them simultaneously there's also an ohms for doing resistance measurements. Um, over here on the side is an SD card slot, so you can put an SD card in there and it will log data to it. It says on here that it is a, uh, that is the rating, CAT3 rated, and we can see there is uh, a fuse in there. The amps, it can do up to uh, 10 amps, and the volts, it can do up to uh, 600 volts. Via this volt jack, it can also do up to 2 volts uh, via the ohm jack. To uh, change the batteries, you do have to unscrew those two screws and take them apart. It came with these two Duracell batteries in it already. Just for a size comparison with my Fluke 87.5, you can see about how big it is. And, you know, size comparison to the carrying case. You know, the carrying case is about equivalent, a little bit thicker, but same height and width as my uh, Fluke. So uh, let's, let's give this thing a shot. So the meter itself, it uses these uh, shrouded connectors, which are good for safety. Uh, right now we'll set it up to measure uh, voltage. So I've got a common and V hooked up. Let me get my iPad out. Got the Mushi meter app installed on the iPad. So we can see right now it's reading kind of uh, just, just random noise here on the probes. I can short them out, we'll get a nice zero. So let's measure this Amazon Basics battery. It's measuring 1.4981. So about 1.498. Let's try out my uh, my fluke. measuring 1.499 okay continuing so it does have a graphing mode so if I switch it over to the uh, the graphing mode how can we do that 
we can go up here, hit that, switch to graph, calling it trend mode. So right now we're just picking up the noise because I'm not uh, I'm not measuring anything. But if we touch that to there, we can see it's uh, graphing the voltage, reading you know around 1.5 volts just like before. And we hit config. That's meter. Go back to meter mode. So one of the nice things about this thing is that you can set it up to do uh, simultaneous voltage and current measurements. So I've I've done that here, measuring a project that's kind of over here on the uh, the left side of the bench. It's 15 uh, volt power supply that um, operates an op amp. So if I switch the power supply on then we can see that my power supply is putting out 14.94 volts and uh, the circuit is drawing uh, 4 milliamps of current so that's you know that's really handy that this thing can do those simultaneous measurements at the same time because often you'd need two different multimeters to, to do those two measurements because you're often wanting to measure voltage and current at the same time so that's uh, really cool I like that feature okay now let's try a simultaneous AC voltage and current measurement I've connected uh, the Mushi meter up to my uh, Magic Eye Tube Spectrum Analyzer and I've connected it into the 6.3 volt AC uh, filament circuit for the tubes. That should be a couple amps of current at about 6.3 volts. Uh, now the first time I tried to do this, the app would constantly disconnect whenever I switched into AC voltage mode. And I got online and found out that I needed to update the firmware on the Mushi meter. So I did that firmware update. Uh, there's a little process of opening the case, pushing the reset button, and then connecting in the app. It took like a minute or two, and now it's working fine in uh, in AC voltage mode. So I have it set up. It's wired up. It's ready to go. I'm, okay, let's turn it on. You see the voltage here rising up to just over 6 volts, and the current settling in at about 1.7 amps. So that's it's good to be able to measure those simultaneously. Okay, I've zoomed in so we can uh, see the graph up close. Let me, I'm going to shut the power supply off. Tubes will be cooling down now. Let's go into graphing mode. So we can see all kinds of noise here that is just picking up. You know, the scale is going from uh, one tenth of a millivolt on the low end to one tenth of a millivolt on the high end. It hasn't uh, it hasn't set the axis until it actually has actual data. But let's turn the power supply on. Okay, yeah, and see we get to see the uh, the the curve as the uh, tubes um, heat up. So we can see there's a lot of inrush current initially. You know, around uh, three better than three and a half amps initially. And then it drops down to uh, about an amp and 1.7 amps, so about the same measurement we were seeing before. But that's that's kind of cool, you know. Without some kind of graphing capability, you wouldn't be able to see that there's this large inrush spike initially. Uh, let me demo that again. So shutting the supply off, everything drops down to zero. Tubes are cooling down, and then turning it on and we will see a curve there on the voltage and a curve on the current. That's, that's actually kind of useful. I'm kind of, kind of glad I have this capability now. Okay, let's try a few higher voltage tests. So I have uh, turned on my Magic Eye Tube Spectrum Analyzer and I've connected the Mushi meter to the high voltage supply this time. And we can see that we're currently got uh, 247.8 volts, and it's drawing uh, about 8 milliamps. Let me try to graph that. Nothing super interesting. I wonder if we'll see something if we uh, shut off the music to it. Yeah, look at that. We shut off the music. 
so the graph is not updating and the voltage is steadied out and the current is dropped down not unexpected I suppose let me plug it back in okay let's try measuring some resistors so I'm gonna put these alligator clippy things that came with it on easiest things in the world to line up and use. There we go. Here's a 100k 1% uh, resistor. Let's hook it up. I've hooked this up to the common and the ohms lead so I'll switch this to ohms Resistance 100.35 Oh is about what it says. Let's get the old fluke out here and uh, see what the fluke has to say about it. The fluke says uh, 100.0 Zero to one hundred point one or so. That's as much. Uh, ac that's as much precision as we can get out of the fluke. Uh, somewhere between a hundred and a hundred point one. This said a hundred point three five two. So I I think they're reasonably in agreement. And now let's uh, just briefly take it apart and look inside. So you take the two screws off. These kind of snaps apart like that. Now there is a reset switch right over there, right next to the SD card slot. And that reset switch that's used to put it into, among other things, to put it into uh, firmware uh, reflashing mode. So they have a video on their website that shows how to reflash the firmware. Don't even know exactly how to get it apart. So to get it apart, I'm finding that you just kind of push on these, just kind of push on these jacks that are in the back, but I kind of hate doing that on this one over here that's cut out for the voltage. So it seems kind of fragile. Okay, there we've got it disassembled. So the banana jacks are just kind of press fit into there. Take the batteries out. So we can see some stuff in here. There's the SD card slot, the reset button, the fuse. I'm not sure what these things are. I'm not well enough versed in multimeters to know. On the back side, we've got a couple chips. This one here is an ADS1292. This one here is a CC2540. CC2540 F256. I guess a CPU and I'd guess an A to D converter for the other one, but those are just guesses. Up here we can see what looks like some kind of programming header. So they did uh, cut an isolation uh, groove around the voltage input. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.